In this video, learn a simple and effective technical analysis trading strategy for cryptocurrencies. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder of SME Capital, and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and The Playbook. In this video, gain a front row seat to watch a consistently profitable firm prop trader moderated by another firm prop trader review a technical analysis trade in cryptocurrencies that you can use to help grow your trading account. Today I'm gonna to be going over a Bitcoin sympathy trade I took. It's a daily breakout trade I used uh, via equities to take advantage of the movement in Bitcoin. So as for the overall trade strategy, it's gonna work best at a time when Bitcoin is breaking through important support or resistance on meaningful volume. Um, and that's the case with like all of these Bitcoin sympathy trades I'm taking. Uh, if Bitcoin's just chopping around, these names aren't gonna trade as cleanly, but the correlative properties really tend to come around when Bitcoin is moving directionally. And that's happening often and usually when we're breaking through key inflection levels. And so in essence, this is a sector vehicle trade. So I'm just viewing Bitcoin price action as the leading indicator for overall sector strength. And then once I see that, I'm flipping through a variety of Bitcoin names that I have as just a basket. So in that basket, I have BTBT, MOGO, CAN, NXT, D, EBON, and a few other ones, but those are the main ones I'm looking at. And then I'm checking which of those is set up the best on the hourly or daily for a technical breakout. As far as the entries, it's just a pretty standard approach for a high time frame technical breakout. So going and building it with the mentality that I'm going to need to give it a little bit of space and I'm intending to hold this for a couple hours to potentially even a few days. Um, and then once I'm in the position, just monitoring price action and volume uh, along with what Bitcoin's doing in order to spot potential areas of exhaustion and engaging where I should be looking to take some profits on my position. For uh, people who may not be too educated on Bitcoin and, and those stocks, could you maybe go over just like how you determined this basket and what kind of really makes them correlated to Bitcoin in a way? I know there's like a lot of logistics, but maybe just an overview. Um, yeah, so some of it is self-fulfilling where people have just settled on these names as Bitcoin names. And when Bitcoin moves, people hit into these names uh, trying to take advantage of the movement in Bitcoin. Um, so once they become kind of established in the basket, they stick there. And when Bitcoin moves, these things follow. Uh, but the real thing is these are, majority of these are Bitcoin mining companies. So they mine for Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin's doing well, the value of the assets they're picking up are increasing and, and vice versa when things are going down. As well as uh, many of these companies hold Bitcoin on their balance sheets. So like inherently, if the price of Bitcoin goes up, the value of their balance sheet goes up, in, which would imply that the value of the company is going up. And, and again, if Bitcoin goes down, they have less money on their balance sheets. So that, that is the general reason. Okay, great. That makes a lot of sense. And then so for a catalyst, one catalyst was INTV uh, signed a three-year co-location agreement with Compute North to secure power capacity and reduce operational costs. And the reason this is important is INTV recently purchased a bunch of Bitcoin miners from CAN and can began catching a bid on this day in sympathy with INTV. So when I see this, I'm essentially just recognizing that market participants are viewing what's good for INTV as good for a CAN. Um, but more importantly than that, for sure, is what I've been talking about uh, with breaking through important key uh, support or resistance levels. And so for the first time in several weeks, Bitcoin was breaking through this resistance at 52,500. Uh, it's a level that I've been watching really closely and been talking about in my reviews nearly every day as an opportunity I was looking for. Um, and so when I saw that breakthrough of that level, I had a suspicion that Bitcoin would probably be continuing to push and put in new all-time highs relatively soon afterwards. If you want to learn three more real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window. So don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop 
than from years of online education. For intraday fundamentals, nothing too crazy. I'm just looking at ATR as a metric for how far I think this thing can go. And then float 109 million, so certainly not a low float. Um, but the magnitude of the moves it makes, especially with comparison to the moves that Bitcoin makes, it, it makes low float like moves. So I think they can capture multiple ATRs of upside as well as to the downside. So I'm just trying to keep that in mind. And then for Bitcoin, you can see obviously we've been incredibly strong previous uh, it's like 2017 all time highs were here around 20,000. And then we've just been kind of straight up since then. Uh, and then at the time of this trade, we were coming off of this big wash from 58,000. Uh, so we made new all time highs, washed out and had just a nearly month long consolidation zone uh, below between like 44 and 52,000, where 52,000 was the resistance level for this overall consolidation zone. And this is generally what we see with Bitcoin. You can see the same thing happened here, made a big run up and then a, a steep correction about 30%. And then about a month of consolidation, a break higher, and then repeat the process. So I'm, I'm kind of viewing this as an analogous move to this move right here. While using Bitcoin as your main focus, is it really the technicals that's your main catalyst versus like actual news and things going on with Bitcoin? And then maybe how much does Arval impact that? Is that, are you choosing the basket names that have a lot more Arval or... Is it also more technical based on those in tandem with Bitcoin? It's largely technically based. So like I said, the there was the INTB news with CAN, but I really don't see that nearly as important as I see the the move that Bitcoin is making here. And in general, I'm really only taking trades in Bitcoin names when Bitcoin itself is doing a lot of volume. And again, that happens when we're breaking through important inflection levels, obviously. Um, so when I see this kind of move happening, I have in my mind, okay, this is the kind of day where I want to be taking a Bitcoin correlation trade uh, and I want to be figuring out what my vehicle is. And then that's when I flip to the basket of stocks that I look at and see which one of these is best set up to take advantage of uh, the move that Bitcoin's making, which one of these uh, low float or Bitcoin related names is the most clearly set up for a technical breakout. And let's use that as my vehicle throughout the day. Um, and then long-term technical is just the daily here on CAN. You can kind of see what I'm talking about. Bitcoin made new all-time highs uh, right around here, I believe. Um, and since then, CAN has gone from like four bucks all the way up to 30 at the time of this trade. Um, so it can make some really large moves. And what I'm looking at with this chart that was so attractive to me is this 25 level where we spent a long time consolidating. Uh, this has really been the length of the consolidation that we saw in Bitcoin when Bitcoin was bouncing between 44 and 52K, uh, CAN was also consolidating. Granted, it's a, it's a large consolidation zone, but it's undeniable this 25 level is important. We've gotten up above it twice, three times, but have never actually been able to close above there or do significant volume above there. And so once I saw CAN holding above 25, that's like a, a big green light for me to start looking to build out a position. It's also nice that that range had continuously high volume all throughout there. Like the technicals aren't great up in there, but mm -hmm. there were clearly people holding it up, even if the levels weren't too clear. So Absolutely. That's definitely, yeah, really nice when you get that final breakout confirmation. You know, there's a lot of people involved now. Yeah, for sure. And just in general, this this daily setup is something I look for a lot in like low float names. Just when we get this hold above the key level that keeps getting wicked out of. Um, generally you can see some real legs to it. Uh, and then you can just see it a little bit more clearly on the hourly. Again, like this 25 to 26 ish region, we've done some volume, but have certainly never sustained and almost all the volume was done during after hours or pre-market. Um, so now that we're actually pushing above here, this is definitely significant. As well as this 2250 level where you could consider taking a initial trade looking for this breakout, but personally, that's not how I like to trade. So I, I didn't get any entries there. And then pre-market, again, for the same reason as with the 2250 uh, that I was explaining, this isn't going to matter too much to me. I'm not really interested in trading CAN until I see it up towards 24 or 25. Um, so good to see when we get a range break above pre-market highs, but that's about all I'm going to use it for, and I'm not going to use these uh, technical levels for entries yet. Uh, and then just a concept I wanted to go over quickly is what Bitcoin was doing intraday. So on the higher time frames, Bitcoin is breaking uh, an important level and I expect it to push quite a bit higher. 
But intraday, uh, because it's a Bitcoin sympathy name, you have to be watching Bitcoin on lower time frames. So I always have like a five minute chart up when I'm trading these Bitcoin sympathy names. And so what we saw is uh, on the day prior, we had the breakthrough 52,000. Um, and this is during the overnight session when none of the equities are actually moving. Um, we, we broke through the level. And then on the day of this trade, we were essentially just moving sideways. Um, and that's good enough for me. All I want to make sure is that Bitcoin's not uh, Bitcoin's not getting in the way of CAN breaking out. So it would be nicer if Bitcoin were going higher. Uh, but the fact that Bitcoin isn't breaking back down is good enough for me to be looking for the breakout. Yeah, and then the one minute technical. So just a, a really clean, uh, a really clear move of strength on the open. The first 30 minutes we push through 25 pretty cleanly um, right here. Again, this is the level I'm really eyeballing as, as they as they clear uh, the line in the sand. We get a bit of a pullback, but hold above view up very nicely uh, and then really get uh, several hours of consolidation before pushing higher into the close. So trade management, um, could be convinced that there's ways for me to get into bigger size here, but the way I was doing it, uh, I wasn't involved for any of this morning move. It's just not part of the way I build out these positions. Um, it's, it's more difficult to manage risk intelligently, in my opinion. Um, but we got this push, in, and certainly when I see it push all the way up to 26, I'm thinking, okay, this is definitely the vehicle I want to use. And then we get this pull back to 24, which I don't bid into, although there's definitely an argument to be made. Um, instead, I wait for this consolidation zone back above 25. Again, this is the level from the daily that I think is really the key level. Um, build into my first shares there. Uh, and then we start just drifting higher and it becomes clear to me that we're probably not going to see much lower on this name. So I build into another lot here. Uh, again, these are just starter lots though, and I have bids placed down from 25 to 24 with pretty pretty substantial size because I think the technical setup is pretty A+. plus. Um, so though I did get these starter lots, I'd be comfortable getting this position like five times larger than I, I actually ended up getting. Uh, and then just putting all the risk against a hold below VWAP in 24 is a, a very reasonable way to do it that I think would work quite well. Um, and then due to the fact that I just didn't have a whole lot of risk on the table, I think that this multi-hour consolidation zone is an area you could make an argument for putting on more size and building up the position. Um, it's just an extra point of risk that I have to be willing to give it, which is a bit concerning uh, for me. So I, I didn't actually end up putting any on. But into the close, we end up seeing uh, volume come in and push to the upside as we break to new all-time highs here. And this is just something I like to do with my trading is if I know that I'm trying to get out of a position, not trying to get my way out of it using tape. Um, I think past the first 30 to 60 minutes of the open, uh, relying on tape too much for the exits can give you a lot of false signals for getting in and out of positions. So instead, I just like to be systematic and I call this scaling out linearly. I scale out linearly from 27 to 29 and even lots every maybe 25 cents on the way up, uh, 29 being a, a fairly substantial move, about an ATR from the lows of this area right here. Is that how you were kind of determining your like mental price target was kind of a ATR move with volume off that consolidation you initially saw? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll talk about it later. I think that there's a lot of merit for me holding on to at least a portion of the position. I think that's like the biggest mistake of the trade. Um, but yeah, if I can capture like an ATR move into the close, then I think that's very worth locking in a decent bit of risk, especially as we're coming into the close and I haven't taken any sales yet. I do think lightening up the position substantially into this kind of price action is just kind of mandatory. Yeah, so here are the executions. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, again, get this hold above 25 and I'm bidding into it. Um, to reiterate what Byron was asking, this, this VWAP level, Aligning with this 24, which is the low of the pullback, is pretty convenient. And I think that if this is really going to be the breakout that I'm looking for, we shouldn't really see back below these prices. So I think it's very gives me a very clear way to position myself and size myself correctly because I know exactly where my risk is. Um, yeah, and then scaling out on the way up into the close. So as for what to improve, I think there's two uh, primary issues. For starters, I think my starter lots should have been a decent bit larger, like 50 to 70, or 75 to like 100% larger. Just given what my current stop is um, and given the clarity of the risk, I think that 
I just need to be getting into bigger size when the when the context is so well set up for me. And it, granted, due to the fact that we didn't really get much of a pullback, I never would have been able to get into max size on this position. But the higher time frame context makes it such that like each of my individual tiers, even if I don't get filled on all those tiers, those tiers should be larger uh, than what I was what I was actually risking. Um, and then the bigger issue, which I was talking about, I think I need to be giving a portion of this uh, and setting it aside as an overnight position. I think about 20% is reasonable uh, as like a potential swing idea because it's such a clean daily breakout and the strength of the Bitcoin move, you know, it's reasonable to expect that we can see CAN move quite a bit higher. And, and that's what we ended up seeing by the next morning in pre-market, CAN had reached 33.50. Um, my last sales on this trade were at 29. Uh, and then later that week, can hit 39. So those are the kinds of moves you can expect to see with these with these kinds of breakout trades. And when they set up how they did in this trade, it's not you shouldn't really expect to see just one day of breakout. Um, I think it's very reasonable and practical to be looking for two or three days of upside, even if you don't take the whole position or even half of the position. At least taking a portion for like a higher time frame, bigger picture idea. I think is, uh, I think it's just the next, uh, one of those next progression steps I need to make in order to become a bigger trader uh, is to try and capture these larger time frame moves. Um, and like I said, the, the swing idea, the size is going to be relatively small. And part of that is because swinging these breakout trades on Bitcoin names can be difficult. Like if this were a independent name, not tied to any sector, I think that I like surely would have taken some of this overnight. But the issue is when Bitcoin is playing a role in the movement of the stock, like even though the setup on CAN is perfect, or it's very solid at least, um, it could still be the case that Bitcoin just sells off and then just completely ruins the technical setup for the breakout. So that, that was my big concern, but it's still worth having some risk on the table. Yeah, I think that's a really important thing to note that you've you have your risk not only in can but also you're thinking of your risk in correlation to bitcoin and what that could be doing overnight and how much more volatile that could be so i definitely think that's just a good point to show everyone like how important bitcoin really is in the execution of your trades in these basket stocks yeah it, it, it's massive um and also because of that variable it makes it a lot harder at least from my experience to make systematic rules for everything you're doing uh, because that additional that additional variable of what Bitcoin is doing just really complicates things. So you do have to make a little bit more judgment calls, in my opinion. Uh, but this is one that I probably was too conservative on. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they were producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comments section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video. From all of us at SMB, train and trade well.